So before I do the Q&A, I want to talk about Jack Conklin getting this new contract now. Um, it's a three, four, it's technically a four-year deal. You know how, look, there are things about NFL contracts in the salary cap that we know and we don't know. And I think that's important to go over. That's one of the things I want to talk about before we start with the questions. Um, and one of the things we know about NFL contracts is that no contracts longer than like three years or two years, really, right? It's only, the contract is truly only the length of the guaranteed money on the deal because once that time passes, both sides are going to want to redo that deal to get more guaranteed money. Football's a dangerous sport. People want their money up front, right? Um, so that's that's one, right? The only fully guaranteed deal on this team is Deshaun Watson. That's the only guy we know has a true five-year deal. Uh, next is I think it's important to keep in perspective. Not to say that you can't have an opinion. Not to say that people who do have more expertise than me in this area are lying or making up stuff. But I do think it's important to keep in perspective that when it comes to the NFL salary cap, we're not really basing information off of, like, the greatest sources, right? Uh, none of this is public. How they go about the cap, and then most importantly, the Browns might have a plan to, to cut some cap space that we're not thinking about, right? Maybe it's a Deshaun Watson restructure already. Maybe there's, there's a Miles Garrett restructure in the works, right? We don't know what the future holds for the salary cap, and that's mainly because we really don't understand the salary cap the same way that people in the league do because they understand not only the written rules of the salary cap, but the unwritten rules of the salary cap, right? And a lot of what gets done when it comes to the NFL salary cap, especially the last 10, 20 years, is unwritten rule stuff, right? This is a lot like what you see um, with banks and everything else. And I'm not saying this is like good, but like, a lot of NFL salary cap becomes a bubble, right? Which means the money becomes theoretical in that you can put as much money into each year as you want to as long as you're willing to kick the can down the road, right? That's somebody else's problem. But that is what this cap situation is, right? When people say the salary cap is cap, that's what they're referring to, which is you can always get around it. That's not a real excuse, right? When somebody doesn't want to do something – it ain't because of the salary cap. When a when a team doesn't want to add uh, wide receivers because they have a quarterback under contract and they say it's the salary cap they're doing it, no, no, they don't want to spend the extra money or put the extra risk involved that you need to do. But there's always a way to make some money show up on the salary cap, point blank, period. So whenever teams give you the excuse of it's a salary cap, that's why people say it's cap because time in and time out, when the motivation is there from ownership – they find a way, right? Um, if I would have told you last year that the Browns would sign Deshaun Watson to a $230 million guaranteed, fully guaranteed contract over, over five years, you would tell me there's no way. We don't got the cap space for that. We barely can afford what we have on the roster. Somehow they found a way to get Deshaun Watson on that contract. Where there's a will when it comes to salary cap, there's a way. So speculating on, on players that you might want to keep, that the team wants to keep, that might be cap casualties um, is kind of like, I don't know. It's fun to do in the offseason, but at this point, I don't really see the purpose in it. So I'm not really going to engage in a ton of that. But it's just important to remember and keep in perspective that what we know about the salary cap is very limited and can't be taken for gospel, even for people who know a lot about the cap, because they know a lot of what they know, but they don't know all the things that they don't know, right? Like, there's just so much to know there that it's impossible to make a determination definitively from the outside. Not saying you can't have an opinion, not saying you can't use what you know to try to make some kind of a rough estimation. We have to use the tools that are available to us, but understand it comes with a grain of salt. And I have done this for, what, five years? And I have had this happen to me too many times where I felt like this is a definitive cap situation. Hell, it was like this with Jack Conklin. Where I was like, there's no way he gets signed back because, you know, we ain't got the cap space for it. Apparently, they feel like they do. So that that's that whole thing. But how do I feel about it? Eh, you know, 
I wouldn't have been too hurt if Jack Conklin walked away in free agency. I'm not upset that he's staying, right? I'm kind of indifferent on this. Um, now, I know there's a bunch of people like, hey, this means something bad for Jed Wills. I don't necessarily buy into that narrative because – Jeff Wills is under contract for at least this year, well, next year, and you can get him on the fifth-year option a year after if he, if you want to do that, right? Um, and then, you know, maybe Ethan Posick might become a casualty of this, but I think Ethan Posick, depending on what his price is going to be, wasn't coming back anyways, right? I think, honestly, I think a lot of people want to keep him on, like, a three-year deal because he played well, but I think realistically the front office is thinking, hey, if he gets over one year, $8 million, I don't think we're going to keep him. We'll just go with Nick Harris and roll the dice um, or sign somebody else because ultimately what was Ethan Posick when they signed him, right? He wasn't really anybody. Um, so, you know, th that's been a position they've proven they could put anybody in, right? They put multiple people in that position. They've been fine. Um, so I don't think they're going to spend big money on center. I think that's why they got rid of J.C. Treader and why they haven't tried to get J.C. Treader back. So I think, you know, it it's interesting where they're going to be at. Um, I think they're going to have good depth next year. And, you know, I'm, I'm not really tripping over it um, as far as how it affects. And again, as far as how it affects the other guys on the line, I don't think this really touches Jed Wills because Jed's going to probably get his fifth year. I don't see why this would stop him from getting his fifth year option. Um, and then at 2025, you'll reevaluate. Do you need to draft another left tackle? You know, you'll, you'll make that determination in 2025. But. I mean, we ain't even in 2023 yet, so that's a long ways to go worrying about something. Um, but I think that's what it's going to be. But that being said, let's get into your questions. Now that we got the Jack Conklin thing out the way, let's look at your questions. Your questions, um, if you want to make sure you can ask your questions, please make sure that you follow me on Twitter. Um, sometimes I drop questions there. Also, you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Quincy Carrier, make sure you hit that notification bell. When you hit that notification bell, you will be um, notified when I do question prompts on Twitter, not Twitter, on uh, YouTube in order for you to ask the questions. And then that's how you can get on the show. Now, with that being said, let's just jump into the questions. The first question is from Ian who says, hey, Q, do you think Watson will play an active role in the recruiting process to the Browns offseason? Further, does Watson's presence make the Browns more? Yes, and yes. I think that's pretty obvious that both of those statements would be true. Um, one, Deshaun Watson's interests are the same as the Cleveland Browns at this point. Like, I, I don't know why he wouldn't recruit, right? He is not like he's in the last year of his deal. It's not like he's trying to get traded. He's on a five-year deal. I don't know why it's even a question. Um, he's on a five-year deal in Cleveland. And I assume he wants to win football games. So, of course, he's going to recruit. Um, now, will he be an attractive piece? Yes. Will he be enough to just make anybody sign to Cleveland for any amount of money? No. Right? And I think when we hear recruiting and a player recruiting, we expect ridiculous shit. Like, we expect... You know, him to get DeAndre Hopkins to sign here for the vet minimum or something like that. You know what I mean? Or DeAndre Hopkins to want to. Like, if Deshaun Watson can either get somebody, a, a regular wide receiver to take less money, or DeAndre Hopkins to even consider Cleveland or something like that, or a free agent like that to consider Cleveland, then that's, that's the power of, of that, right? But I think people think, hey, this star player is going to try to recruit players. And they think that he not only needs to get that player to the city, but needs to get that player to the city on a good deal. Which is ridiculous, right? Like nobody, nobody has that power. You know what I mean? I think Engraven is one of the best YouTubers out. He's one of my favorite guys out there. But if Engraven hit me up, talk about some join the Ravens or something, join this Ravens coverage team that I'm doing uh, for less money. Yeah, bro, I'm, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to tell my homeboy no. You know what I mean? There's a limit to what you can recruit somebody to do is the point that I'm trying to get across. is even if it's your homeboy, even if it's somebody you feel like is great and you can win a lot of games with, you still want to get paid because this is a profession. We need to stop acting like it's not a profession, dog. It's, it's somebody's job. And just the same way I want to take a pay cut, same way you don't want to take a pay cut, it's the same way. They ain't trying to take a pay cut because it's their job. And it just don't ever feel good to do your job while being paid less. That's just you don't go through life thinking, hey, I want to get paid less next year. You know what I mean? But 
it's a whole nother rant for a whole nother day. Um, especially when they cake it. Let me, let me not. Let me not. Uh, Stingray says, <laughs> he didn't even do anything to deserve that rant. Uh, my apologies. Stingray Slapper says, Q, do you think Ethan Posick will be back off, uh, uh, being back off high R will help Chubb in the run game significant? I don't know. I don't know. I find it hard to believe that a center going out, when this team has swapped centers like the last three years and like not had an issue um, when it comes to injury. Well, they didn't swap a ton with JC. JC did play a lot, but they pretty much swapped JC out, put in Nick Harris. Nick Harris got hurt in preseason and then just slapped in Ethan Posick and nothing changed. You know what I mean? Like the only time it got bad was one in the Miami game where it was getting bad before that, before Ethan Posa got back, got out there, they leave Chubb at like 1.4 yards per carry in that game, and then Ethan Posa got hurt in the in the next game. So it's not like a clean cut, hey, Ethan Posa went out and then Nick Chubb was bad. Um, it, it's been a little bit messier than that. Now, will he help? Yeah. I think what's also going to help is that, you know, maybe Wyatt Teller's feeling healthier. Maybe Jack Conklin's feeling better after getting that money, right? Maybe in the Ethan Posa, He's better than Yodi Frijo, right, who's not a center. So I think that's going to help more often. Again, I don't think it's a causation more than it's a correlation, but we'll see. We'll see. I think they're going to play better, though, this week, though, too. I think they're going to play better. I think they're going to have a good attack. I don't think the Saints cause the same problems as the Ravens and the and the Bengals. Also, you got to factor that in, right? You were measuring what they were doing against some very good teams over this stretch, some very good defenses, right? You played the Bucks, who have a good defense. You played um, the Bills, the Miami, um, Cincinnati, and the Ravens, right? Five good defenses in that stretch where he was out, Um and then now we playing the Saints, so it's going to look better. But, like, it ain't like DJ Reader's out there, right? The Saints just ain't that kind of a defense. The next question comes from Epic Jet, who says, Hey, Q, do you think the season ends with Andrew Barry will try to overhaul certain positions? Yes. Yes, of course. He's going to try to fix some positions. That's his job. If he didn't, he wouldn't be doing his job. So, yeah, I think he's going to be fixing some positions. Defensive tackle. Now, how hard does he go? I think some people – are setting themselves up for a little bit of failure, right? Because they're like, hey, we need to get these big names. I don't think he's getting any big names. I'm not expecting any big names. Um, I don't think this is a big name free agency. You're going to get a lot of guys who have been in the league three, four years that only people for that local team know. And I think that's fine. I think that's fine. But, you know, maybe you get a couple aging vets, but I don't think you get the big names. You know, you're not getting Deron Payne or something like that, right? Uh, we're not trading for D Brown or something like that, right? It's, it's going to be small names that we're going to have to look at PFF grades and supplemental tape to have a real opinion on because it ain't like we was checking for these dudes before they were free agents or before they were available. Um, but I think that's what we're most likely looking at. And then some aging vets. Um, Wesley says, do you think that Jacob Phillips will be the start? No, I don't think. No, I think that experiment died. Um, Celestial says, hey, is Harrison Bryant a long-term option for this? I have no clue with him. Um, he is so inconsistent that it, it, it's just hard to gauge with him. Um, you know, he had that one good camp his rookie year, but after that he's really been a disappointment. So I don't know what to do with Harrison, man. He's not big enough to be a great inline blocker, and he doesn't look like he's able to put on the weight that he needs to. And he's not fast and athletic enough to be that great of a receiver. He's kind of in a no man's land. I think it's just time to cut bait. Um, Ralph Miller says, what edge rusher do you see watching Miles Garrett to compliment him this season? I think it's going to be the exact same thing they're running out next year, this year. It's going to be Miles Garrett, Alex Wright, and Jadavion Clowney, and I'm ultimately fine with that. Um, and maybe it's not Clowney. They just keep Alex Wright. But I think Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney, Alex Wright, or Alex Wright is going to probably be what you're going to be doing there. Hopefully both of them. Um, but that's going to be it for this Q&A. You guys have a great day. Have an even better night.